Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz and we're joined by Chris Unger. He is a member of the San Luis Coastal Unified School Board, also president-elect of the California School Boards Association. And sir, I want to speak with you about technology. There is no doubt that public schools, private schools, they are looking mightily as to how to bring in technology mm -hmm. into the classroom. Some have done better than others. We won't talk about LAUSD and their iPad program, but be that as it may, talk to us about kind of the integration of technology into the classroom. Sure, well, what we're starting to see, and it's, and it's interesting that you mentioned LA mm -hmm. Unified because in, in a way it was the right idea. How right. do you get technology in the hands of kids who can't otherwise right. afford it? So we know that, that you can't stop the train of technology. Mm -hmm. For example, in our school district, um, one of our junior high schools, we have given one-to-one -one devices to the set to the sixth graders and the seventh graders. We know that they will take that into the eighth grade, then they'll take that into the high school well, as well. Okay, so how are they doing? That's the, that's the question. Well, you mean in terms of test scores? No, just or, adopting technology. I mean, well, is this a school, for example, when they get? Is it? We'll call it a tablet. Sure. Is everything being delivered to them via the school via tablet? I mean, are there textbooks on there? Are they doing homework on there? And the answer is yes. Wow. So the, the lessons are being delivered to the students mm -hmm. that way. Um, the, the students are doing projects using it. The teachers are integrating this technology throughout their classrooms and throughout the students' days. It's mm. very exciting. What and are the, the kids are completely engaged. And yeah, so what are the students saying? I ask, my daughter's at a school. Sure. Uh, she's sure. going into eighth grade, so it, it's right, right around the same age. And she had, she had um, tablet adoption last year in seventh grade. And it took a little while to kind of get used to the interfaces. Um, and for a while, homework took longer than it would have, but for the tablet. Mm -hmm. But now she loves it. Right. Is that what you're hearing from That's your students? That's exactly what we're hearing from the students. Mm -hmm. The students really like it. Mm -hmm. The parents like it. The teachers like it. And, and we know that Technology is not the be-all, end-all, mm -hmm. but it is certainly a tool that we have to be able to teach kids to use and that kids have to be able to use effectively if they're going to be strong 21st century citizens. But let me ask you this. So uh, we have Wi-Fi in our home. Mm -hmm. There are homes without Wi-Fi. Yes. My daughter is required to turn in assignments um, by, let's say, midnight. Mm -hmm. She can't go back to school the next day and turn it in right before class. If we didn't have Wi-Fi, what would she do? Right, and of course, it's it's not just the Wi-Fi in the mm -hmm. houses. It's how do you get that access to homes of people who can't really afford to have right. it. So there, there are a couple of things you've got to think about. The first is, do they have access to the hardware? And where are they going to get the hardware? Well, the hardware, wouldn't that be the tablet that That's they're given? The, the, the tablet, the computer, right. whatever. Okay. I mean, we're talking about homes that don't necessarily have computers in them. Right, but let's presume and, they have the tablet. Right, and then there's the internet access. Right. Because how do you get that access to their doorstep? Well, and, and then, once we right. get it in there, of course, then then you can do the Wi-Fi or you, you use right. a modem to plug it in or something so, like look, that. The good news is companies like Charter Communications mm -hmm. are looking to build programs yes. that will create access mm -hmm. ubiquitously. It takes a little time, but Charter and its sister mm -hmm. cable companies right. and other mm -hmm. internet providers are looking to create those solutions. But be that as it may, you know, as we speak today, it's still a tricky situation. It, it is a tricky situation. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we as school board members have wrestled with, right. which is that we're, we're expected to be doing these things and we're mm -hmm. expected to see the integration of technology in classrooms. It, it's a requirement for the Smarter Balanced Assessment. Right. And so if we can't, I mean, if we, first of all, it, we'll, we'll talk about that for a second, but if you can't teach kids how to use the technology, how can they take the test? That said, if we're expecting that kids are going to be doing things like writing reports, mm -hmm. uh, doing research, using the computer, using a tablet, true, whether it right. comes home or not, how do they get access to the big world out there that is required so, through connectivity? So look, even if an internet provider like Charter created a low-cost program, right. you can't require a parent to create a Wi-Fi hotspot in their home. You can't do it. So what 
I mean, I know the answer to the question. So school districts are looking for solutions. Right. And there are some innovative ones. Sure. I, and, and, and I think, we can, as you said, we can't force mm -hmm. people to sign up to get access to the internet. Mm -hmm. if, if that's going to be the expectation, though, for kids, um, it's going to be tough for those kids. But so what do they do? So they do things like they go to the library. You know, fortunately, libraries have internet access. Um, but if a child lives far away from, from the library, it's going to be hard for them to do it. One of the things that I think uh, that, that I heard that was a really unique solution right. to it. This is where I'm was, going. Uh, and I believe this yeah. was in the Coachella Valley, yes. a very impoverished community um, of, of, of mobile homes. Right. And so in order to get internet access, what the district did was it provided Wi-Fi onto one of their school buses, right. the school bus that took the kids to, to school, and the kids could go use that. Right. And, and those are the kinds of solutions that I think schools and communities are going to have to be looking and at. And schools can work with companies like Charter or mm -hmm. whomever to create that solution. Absolutely. So it really is about a public-private partnership. There has to be, there's going to have to be those partnerships because in most places, internet access is not a, 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 a governmental service, oh, no, right? No, no, no. And so that means that we are going to be required we, as school districts, should be looking at what can we do to work with our partners in the community, our cities, counties, and what do we want to look at to be able to work with our, the private industry who's, who's giving those things or who's providing those things to the public. And so what, talk to me about it. Tell me what's going well, on. Well, one of the things that we'd like to see and that I think mm -hmm. that, that I understand Charters mm -hmm. is, is providing um, is low-cost subsidized right. internet service for free for students who are in poverty, typically Wonderful. our students who are free and right. reduced. But what about beyond that? Are you starting to think about the school buses? Mm -hmm. You know, solutions because again, we can't require right. a family to purchase internet. Right. Those are those are really important mm -hmm. things, and that internet access, especially for those really rural communities, mm -hmm. where maybe. You, you know, you're you're getting your electricity right. through a generator. Of You've course. got maybe you're not getting electricity. Right. Maybe there's no cell phone service. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is no phone service. But again, How yeah, do is, you get tough. things to those yeah. people? And those are the kinds of discussions that schools are having, and that people are wondering about. Was, because we want to well, make sure that it's, that everybody, especially our kids in poverty, crazy. have that access. It's crazy. So I was speaking with um, an elected official in this county, and she was telling me. I mean, as recently as 20 or 30 years ago, in her community in rural mm -hmm. uh, San Luis Obispo County, they basically had a party line for eight houses. Oh, yeah. And this is in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And this is San Luis Obispo County. So, you know, it's not that long ago mm -hmm. when even telephones were hard to access in, you know, rural counties. And so, look, sure. as we advance, these issues are going to come up time and time again. Absolutely. And it will take a village to figure it out. Well, absolutely, and if you think about just San Luis Obispo County itself, right. it has one of, well, our school district in Shannon has one of the few right. one-room schools Truly. in Parkfield. Right, right. So how do we get at, make sure that those kids have access to the technology that they're going to need, whether they stay there or not? I mean, gosh, you know, even if we're talking about kids that are going to be, that are going to be taking over the farms, working on ag businesses for their, for their parents, or taking that you know, tractors run on GPS now, right? Farmers need to be able to access computers and to be able to access those programs which allow them to, to do what they can do to become profitable and stay in business. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's, it's, it's boring, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> His name is Chris Unger. He is a member of the school board on San Luis Coastal. He is the incoming president, very exciting, of the California School Boards Association. My name is Brad Pomerantz. You are watching Charter Local Edition. Thank you.